I am my push girl. Yes, I am a push girl. <laughs> through and through. Not only someone that was on the show, but also someone that pushes through life. And that's kind of what the point of the title of the show was, was to push boundaries, push through life, push through any obstacles that come your way. And I definitely live up to that <laughs> as much as I can on an everyday basis. And also throughout my goals and everything in life, I just, I definitely don't let things stop me. I, and in fact, I think it encourages me more to do things. If someone says that I can't do something or if, if it hasn't been done, I'm like, okay, let's try it. I think that that's what a lot of misconception is about people with disabilities is that like our disability somehow like the hardest thing in our life and the thing that, <laughs> you know, causes depression and stress and it's actually not that most cases. And definitely in my life, what's been the hardest is my relationship with my mom, her substance use, alcoholism. It's It's been a long, long, long journey. When I was 15 and I got paralyzed, I remember thinking, sitting in my hotel, uh, in my hospital room and looking at the TV and thinking, gosh, like I've never seen anyone on TV with a disability like mine. And, you know, I, I don't know what this is now going to make for my life and will I have a life you know like can someone you know continue nope. <laughs> and be happy and be the person they want to be yeah because I had never seen it so I just didn't really think it was possible and then I thought well maybe I could do that someday and help other people like on a mass media scale because this was before social media so there wasn't mm -hmm. any like connection that way yeah I, I mean it's very like, hard to be disabled okay. and shy because if you are shy it really hurts you a lot that like, you have to be like an advocate for yourself to like mm -hmm. asking for help is mm -hmm. very non-shy inducing like you have to be active mm -hmm. to be non-disabled if that makes sense absolutely makes sense having to get over whatever shyness you have disability definitely pushes pushes that out of your mind in a lot of ways because you have to and also in in other other ways like job interviews and a lot of times you're the first person with a disability someone has ever met so that first impression is so important. And because of that, sometimes you have to force yourself to be a little more smiley or a little more like <laughs> outgoing when you're when not necessarily feeling it because at the end of the day, um, that impression will stay with somebody. As the only person in a wheelchair in my high school, my high school wasn't even accessible at the time. So oh. it is now, by the way. But, but when <laughs> I went there, I was just, I was terrified. And so, yeah, I think... I was going to be a lot more shy. I felt more shy and I felt more like, well, if it goes bad, I'll just become an introvert and <laughs> not talk to anybody. I mean, these were the kind of scenarios I was thinking in my head as a 15 year old going back into high school. But literally the first moment I had getting back to school took it all away. Everybody was just really excited to see me back. And somebody even said something similar to like, she's the same, just sitting down. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That is so freaking true. Like, I'm still that same person. And it's one of the things that got me out of my shyness was I remember one of the first weekends I was back after getting paralyzed, um, some of my girlfriends were going to have like a sleepover at with someone's house. And I was really nervous because, you know, there was a lot of steps and, you know, it wasn't going to be the same. We had had sleepovers a ton of times before. And now all of a sudden, like, I'm in a wheelchair. How is this going to change things? And I remember thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't go. And then I thought, oh, wait, if the only reason I'm not going to go is because of the wheelchair, then f that. <laughs> so I was like, no, that that makes me like even more want to go. And Every time I, that ever happened in the beginning of like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't do this because of the wheelchair, then I knew that I had to do it. And then it became habit. And then it just became second nature. And now I don't even think about the wheelchair. So. They just don't want to put the effort to like go out in the world and such because I think it, it, it for one, it's a shame too, but I think it's like, we don't have to see someone else. Like, look at you, you, are, you grew up not seeing a disabled person and you're out there like dancing, you co-founded a dance studio and all this like you're kind of the pioneers of it like you didn't have anyone to look up to so i don't think anyone needs anyone to look up to they just gotta do it for themselves because the world is short the world is small kind of ish you know like mm -hmm. you gotta do what you gotta do and like you're, you're the only one that can kind of put your limitation not anybody else because there's so much you can really do 
That's exactly, exactly right. I think that there are people that are very, very insecure about their disability. And I realize sometimes that I don't think it necessarily has to deal with the disability. That disability only might enhance it, but at the Mm -hmm. core root of things, it's probably not the disability. (laughs) And just like anything else, you know, like I was a positive person before I was paralyzed and the getting paralyzed only enhanced that positivity in some ways. So can we like talk about how blame your paralyzing story is? Because like some will have like an accident and like they're like rock climbing and you just like didn't do anything. You just like went to bed and then woke, woke up <laughs> one day. Like do you ever like to change your story just to give it some pizzazz? Like some like... Yeah, it's so funny. There, there you know, there's sometimes where I when I was a kid someone would stop me on the street and be like, what happened to you? And I'm like, car accident. Like I, because like I'm literally passing by. I'm like, I don't have the time to tell you (laughs) the story of like literally what happened. But, but yeah, I definitely get judged for, for being a little bit, a little dangerous, but you know, that's, that's my personality. It's my personality to, I mean, you're in a wheelchair. Like how worried can I get for you? Honestly. Well, that's what I kind of always used to say. I'd be like, I'm already paralyzed. Like, you know, and then people, then uh, whenever I used to say that, someone would be like, well, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. (laughs) And the truth of the matter is like, going back to what I said before, okay, well, I know other people that have had that and I know other people that have gotten through that. I'm pretty sure I could do it. Hello, welcome to my podcast, Two Mice, One Joe Suits. I'm Joe Suits. Now, if you give me a mic to Maya. Maya, the wheelchair TV star and dancer, her disability journey started when she was 15 years old. Her spinal arteriovenous malformation <laughs> had ruptured in her spinal cord. It left her paralyzed from the waist down. To start the conversation, are you a push girl or an independent woman? <laughs> I am. Well, first of all, um, you might want to review because it's it's pronounced Mia <laughs> instead of Maya, but most oh, people get that. confused on that one. No, don't be. Not nobody. <laughs> nobody would know unless, like, yeah, you were around me. So. I am a push girl. Yes, I am a push girl <laughs> through and through. Not only someone that was on the show, but also someone that pushes through life. And that's kind of what the point of the title of the show was: was to push boundaries, push through life, push through any um, obstacles that come your way, and. I definitely live up to that (laughs) as much as I can on an everyday basis. And also throughout my goals and everything in life, I just, I definitely don't let things stop me. In in fact, I think it encourages me more to do things. If someone says that I can't do something or if if it hasn't been done, I'm like, okay, let's try it. I'm glad you mentioned it because I think it has a lot to do with your personality of how you did things. And I think there's some foundation thing that have helped you shape the way. So let's just talk about the show for a second. So for preparation for this interview, I actually watched Push Girl. For the audience, it's a reality. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, for the, re- for the audience, it's a reality show that featured four women in wheelchair going through their daily lives. The show even won a Critics' Choice Award for Best Reality Show. What was harder, you coping from being paralyzed or your mom being an alcoholic and losing all hope for you? That's a great question. And I would definitely say my mom, for sure. I think that that's what a lot of misconception is about people with disabilities is that like our disability somehow like the hardest thing in our life and the thing that, (laughs) you know, causes depression and stress. And it's actually not that most cases. And definitely in my life, what's been the hardest is my relationship with my mom. her substance use, alcoholism, it's, it's been a long, long, long journey. And I, I used to think it was more about her and decisions and her behavior and how she carried herself. And then I started to realize like, it's really only affecting me the way I want to perceive it. And when I started to realize that I couldn't control necessarily somebody else's behavior, and it really wasn't about me, that it kind of, opened up a lot of things for me and released a lot of tension and anger and things that I was holding inside towards her. And then the show actually really helped with that because a lot of what was going on with me was a lot of shame about it. When I was Mm -hmm. a a kid, I was just very embarrassed that my mom wasn't like my friend, my friend's moms. And I had this idea of what my mom needed to be like. And 
that wasn't necessarily the mom I was given and that's okay. <laughs> and, and when I started to think about what that meant of like, okay, well, this just gives me a different perspective on life. And I started to re release a lot of what I was thinking about it. And when the show came out, it was like, okay, well, this isn't a secret anymore. You know, this is, mm -hmm. I'm, this isn't a shameful thing. This is just life. And even throughout the show, there were people that, that contacted me that, you know, said, thank, thank you for putting that out there because I had the same issue in my life and I'm really, you know, ashamed of it. And it, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just life. <laughs> and I think that's part of why Push Girls was really important to do is because we were able to show our lives, but also connect with other people with a lot of things that haven't been shown on TV and in the media, and especially in reality. And, you know, granted, this is one of the first reality shows that happened to highlight people with disabilities. And, and it got a lot of acclaim because I think that a, it was different, but B, when people see something that they haven't seen before, it's like, well, yeah, I can connect with this and I can connect with that. It had nothing to do about our disabilities. It was just humanity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was a really amazing experience. I yeah, wasn't expecting the experience to affect me as much. It was, it was. Yeah, I'm just surprised you like went out there and you wanted to put yourself out there and like have the whole world watch you go through a pretty dark moment and also shout out to your mom for wanting to go on tv too and explain her yeah. why she's not a good person that kind of ballsy i don't know like how it's you gonna work I that out agree. but like I agree. my mom is a very 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 shy private person um and funny enough i am also so for both really? of us to even do something like that was kind of out of our comfort zone and but i have to say when what drove me to do it was when I was 15 and I got paralyzed, I remember thinking, sitting in my hotel, uh, in my hospital room and looking at the TV and thinking, gosh, like I've never seen anyone on TV with a disability like mine. And, you know, I, I don't know what this is now going to make for my life. And will I have a life? You know, like, can someone, you know, continue nope. <laughs> and be happy and be the person they want to be? Yeah, because I had never seen it. So I just didn't really think it was possible. And then I thought, well, maybe I could do that someday and help other people like on a mass media scale, because this was before social media. So there wasn't mm -hmm. any like connection that way. And so when the show came about, it was also before before social media really took off. It was kind of, you know, Facebook was around, but Instagram wasn't even like it wasn't even a zygote at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really helpful to be able to reach people on a mass level. And I knew that that was probably the most powerful way to be able to help others going through what I was going through at that time thinking, oh, gosh, you know, like my life's over. And then seeing, you know, other people was just being those people that other people could see was just such a gift. And I knew that I had to get over my my fear and my privacy and my shyness um, to be able to do that and so yeah so that's I, that's how it went I, down I, I, <laughs> I mean i find it hard to believe that you were shy because you're a dancer so like a dancer is like you know you're kind you're I, I, maybe you're dancing with others but you're kind of the center of attention and stage fright and all that that's pretty baldy to do and i i don't i don't want to believe you maybe you're better now but like i don't believe that you are shy but I don't know you well, in person. Too. Yeah. Well, Joe, that's actually interesting you say that because I think there's different um, types of shyness. My shyness was always about a little bit of like a social shyness on interpersonal levels and, and my private life. I was just always <laughs> very shy to open up and to kind of meet new people that way. But performing is completely different. Com performing to me is, it's almost like I'm not, like I'm not I don't know I guess maybe I step outside of my body in some way so the anxiety is completely different for me it doesn't feel vulnerable it feels thrilling and exciting and then opening up for me is way more challenging um, <laughs> than it is to just perform and dance and also performance I'm better when it's bigger audiences than than mm -hmm. if I'm just performing for like one person in fact <laughs> growing up I remember in not wanting my parents to come to any of my swim meets or anything that I ever did because it would just make me shy. Like I didn't like to perform for people I knew, mm -hmm. but when it came to That's an crazy audience, though. I didn't know I was totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know. I feel it's like, really weird. I, I feel like you're one of those people that love the attention though. Like you came in here 
gun blazing. Like we we hit it up really well. Like exp <laughs> full of energy yeah. and such and no, everything. No, I love people. <laughs> I love people and I love to learn and I love to connect and so it's definitely thrilling for me. But when I think about it, yeah, like if I get in my head about it <laughs> or if I'm you know worried about about yeah, I don't know. I don't know really. You know, also I think that shyness for me is a natural feeling but i had to change schools a lot when i was a kid and that actually forced mm. me to get out of it as mm. far as just pushing myself through it and not letting it stop me so i am shy naturally but i have been able to push through it so that it's become a habit to like not let it uh, contain me if that makes sense so a lot of I mean, people are like, what? You're shy? I can't believe that. And yeah, I, I mean, it's very crazy. hard to be disabled and shy because if you are shy, it really hurts you a lot that like you have to be like an advocate for yourself. So like mm -hmm. asking for help is mm -hmm. very non-shy inducing. Like you have to be active to be non-disabled, if that makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. In fact, I remember when I was in the rehab hospital and they were teaching us, you know, how to live life as a paralyzed person. And I just remember them taking us out into public for the first time. And I was so nervous because I'm like, this yeah. is the first time I'm going to be in a wheelchair in public. But they had us focus on that, like make eye contact with people and don't be afraid to ask for help. And, and for the most part, people want to help. So it's not like I feel that, you know, I'm like doing something bad, <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. if anything, it brightens someone's day to be able to, to help out. So, so at the end of the day, that definitely is also another example of having to get over whatever shyness you have. Disability definitely pushes, pushes that out of your mind in a lot of ways, because you have to. And also in, in other, other ways, like job interviews, and a lot of times you're the first person with a disability someone has ever met. So that first impression is so important. And because of that, sometimes you have to force yourself to be a little more smiley or a little more like <laughs> outgoing when you're when not necessarily feeling it because at the end of the day, um, that impression will stay with somebody. You know, I've, I've had some people say, you know, I, I just stopped talking to anyone that I would ever see in a wheelchair because I had a really bad experience with someone, you know, one time because they just kind of yelled at me for trying to help. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that was that person. Maybe they were having a bad day. They're just a normal human mm -hmm. being. But that doesn't mean you have to put that on every person with a disability that you'll ever see. So it's unfortunate that people see it that way. But at the, at the same time, it is in the back of my head of what impression, like, are we going to be making on somebody that um, may not have a, an idea of what um, interacting with someone with a disability has on, on them. So. Yeah, so let's address your shyness. So, like, you were normal, and then 15, you got the accident. So, are you, would you say you're more shy now because of having a disability? Because disability can be a very, it's a very traumatic experience to, like, your self-esteem, and people look at you differently, obviously. Like, no matter how much people are going to look at you, they're going to judge you and all that. So, like, are you, did you become more shy after the accident? Because it's always that build-up period of, like, kind of going back to the way you were before like a little differently but like the same before i think at sense. first yeah at, yes at first i was way more shy but i would describe it as more anxiety i was mm -hmm. just really nervous but um it all came back to going back to high school because i was 15 and i had to go back to 10th grade as the only person in a wheelchair in my high school my high school wasn't even accessible at the time so Oh. It is now, by the way, but but when <laughs> I went there, I was just, I was terrified. And so, yeah, I think I was going to be a lot more shy. I felt more shy and I felt more like, well, if it goes bad, I'll just become an introvert and <laughs> not talk to anybody. I mean, these were the kind of scenarios I was thinking in my head as a 15 year old going back into high school. But literally the first moment I had getting back to school took it all away. Everybody was just really excited to see me back. And somebody even said something similar to like, she's the same, just sitting down. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That is so freaking true. Like, I'm still that same person. And if I'm still that same person, I'm going to be that same person. Um, mm -hmm. And so it kind of took the wheelchair out of it for me. And then also, one of the things that got me out of my shyness was, I remember one of the first weekends I was back, 
after getting paralyzed, um, some of my girlfriends were going to have like a sleepover at with someone's house. And I was really nervous because, you know, there was a lot of steps and, you know, it wasn't going to be the same. We had had sleepovers a ton of times before. And now all of a sudden, like, I'm in a wheelchair. How is this going to change things? And I remember thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't go. And then I thought, oh, wait, if the only reason I'm not going to go is because of the wheelchair, then fuck that. <laughs> so I was like, no, that that makes me like even more want to go. And every time I, that ever happened in the beginning of like, OK, well, maybe I shouldn't do this because of the wheelchair. Then I knew that I had to do it. And then it became habit. And then it just became second nature. And now I don't even think about the wheelchair. So <laughs> it kind of evolves in that way. And I think it definitely helps me get out of my shell more often. And I would say the the being paralyzed and having a disability and always being usually the person that stands out, the one that's different in the room has gotten, in, in fact, it's taken that aspect of shyness completely on the other side. Like, I feed off of that now because I know it's a conversation starter and it's just, it's an easy thing that I can talk about. I think shyness before came from insecurity of like, well, I don't really know who I am and I don't really know what I stand for. And I don't really know if someone's going to like what I have to say. And it was, you know, I don't know if I should open up about my family because, you know, maybe that's, you know, so it was always about like self-criticism and now it's, you know, it's a lot more confident, especially with a disability. So it's funny because I, a lot of people would assume like it would take your confidence away, but if anything, it's given me confidence and continues to, continues to give me confidence and purpose. So I see it as a gift, honestly. So we were talking about earlier how like social media didn't exist at all. And I'm just assuming you never surrounded yourself with other disabled people. So do you think not being surrounded by disabled people has helped you more than being surrounded by disabled people? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's even more so with the connection of like other disabilities. I, I, before I had a disability, I honestly never knew anyone with a disability before that. I had never interacted with anyone. So I didn't know anything about that world. And now, and I remember this too, which is such a great, great line. When I went to the rehab center in Atlanta at Shepherd Center, Alana Shepard, who is the founder of Shepherd Center, she said to my mom and I, when we got there, like, your world is about to get a lot bigger. And my mom and I kind of looked at each other like, what, what does that even mean? Like, do I even want my world to be bigger? I don't even know what that means, you know? And now I get that. Like, it's so amazing to be part of this community. And with social media, seeing more and more diversity and more and more people with different types of disabilities. And you and I, you know, like the fact that you and I could connect, you know, through social media. Yeah. I mean, of all people all over the world, recently I connect, I, I connect. And I, it's funny because I do have had my shyness and it still comes out in social media a lot. Like I get very shy about like posting things and like, mm. so, so funny, but. But even just the other day, I saw like a really funny video of a guy that was in Germany who happened to, you know, be paralyzed. And he had an experience that like totally resonated with me. And I'm like, see, I would never even have known that person if it wasn't for social media and the connection. So I've seen our community grow a lot more and I've seen it become more confident because people can see other people and connect with other people and realize we're not alone at all. And the more we unite together, the more powerful we can be. And I think that... Um, that's just only a, a helpful stepping stone in, in trying to get more civil rights going and, you know, more accessibility and, and all this. We have to stick together. And social media is a huge platform to be able to do that. I'm, I'm not going to dive in a little bit that much into it, but it's also a lot very toxic, at least to me, because my whole job is trying to find guests and like follow so many people that I find it more toxic than good. But that's just yes. more of a personal <laughs> issue and like fine. I, I like yeah. your personality a lot because I think you just really did, you are aware of who you are and like what your challenges are and you keep going forward and I think a lot of us are insecure about thinking and they're not, they just don't want to put the effort to like go out in the world and such because I think it, it, it for one it's a shame too but I think it's like we don't have to see someone else, like look at you, you, are, you grew up not seeing a disabled person and you're out there like dancing, you co-founded a dance studio and all this, like you're kind of the pioneers of it. Like you didn't have anyone to look up to. So I don't think anyone needs anyone to look up to. They just 
got to do it for themselves because the world is short, the world is small, kind of ish. You know, like, yeah. you got to do what you got to do, and like, you're, you're the only one that can kind of put your limitation, not anybody else, because there's so much you can really do. That's exactly, exactly right. I think that a lot of it plays into personality more so than anything with anything. I know that there are people that are very, very insecure about their disability. And I realize sometimes that I don't think it necessarily has to deal with the disability. That disability only might enhance it, but at the mm-hmm. core root of things, it's probably not the disability. <laughs> and just like anything else, you know, like I was a positive person before I was paralyzed. and. The getting paralyzed only enhanced that positivity in some ways. So, you know, I also have people that are that tell me, oh, I have a friend who got paralyzed doing some crazy stunts. And then after he was paralyzed, he continued to do crazy things in his wheelchair. And, you know, like you would think that he would have learned. I'm like, no, like getting a disability doesn't change the core of who you are. It only enhances like some traits that you might have already have for the good or for the bad it doesn't you know it doesn't matter but that's just like anybody else too and i think that's one of the things that makes us human you know and and a lot of people sometimes want to label the disability as like the reasons for all these things of why we why we act the way we do or why we seem the way we do when at the at the end of the day it's just like any other human being that you know we all have issues and they'll come out in the ways that our life trajectory allows them to so to speak, because we all give in our own challenges and everyone's challenges are different. And, and some, you know, some can take you down and some can lift you up. And I think that we have an op- opportunity with every challenge to be, to use it as a lifting up. But sometimes it takes a little more time. And sometimes, you know, even with my mom, like I know that a lot of her issues stem from stuff, you know, that, that happened in, you know, her childhood. And at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's things that she can take and, and use those things for growth. And I've seen that her overcoming her substance use in a lot of ways has given her strength. Now, would she have chosen to have those challenges necessarily? No, probably not. But, you know, at the end of the day, those things can make you stronger or you can let them defeat you. And I think we all have the opportunity to, to let them make us stronger if we choose so. And it doesn't have to happen on a certain timeline either or when other people think it should happen. You know, I don't, I actually am not a fan of when, um, when people are be, will say, you know, well, this person should get over it. They've been paralyzed 10 years already, you know, and they should, you know, it's like, no, like everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own timeline. Everyone has their own plan and that's totally okay. So yeah, it's interesting to see how everybody deals with certain things and how it changes their life and their, their, their core personality and how it affects affects the rest of their life. Yeah, I always believe that like anyone that's born doing something, they're, they're going to be the same person as disabled or not. Like they're going to go on a similar path regardless of what happens in the middle of it. And I believe that's what happens like my career that I'm you know, verified and monetized on YouTube and stuff. I think maybe I wouldn't get verified. Maybe I wouldn't get like monetized on YouTube. I think I'd be doing something on a grand scale that I think would be along the same path of getting larger and a bigger audience. I think, I think that happens to most people. We're going to, we're going to do whatever we are set to do from the beginning. I don't like, I'm not saying like, re, like, I don't believe in God. So I don't think we have a like God given purpose, but if you have, like there's something inside of you that if you're going to do, you're going to have the same accomplishment regardless of what you do or don't have, because there's something inside of you that wants to accomplish that. I believe that's, I agree. I agree. I I think that deep down, even if we consciously don't realize it, there's a drive in us to get something done. And that drive will not go away unless you attempt it. And it doesn't mean that you have to uh, accomplish it on the scale that you might think you have to, you know, but you definitely have to try and you definitely have to try to attempt that road. And, you know, when people talk about like manifesting things because they've, you know, they've said that this is what I envisioned for myself and this is what happened because I envisioned it. I think there's that there's just intuition there. I think we all have this intuition of like what we need to get done <laughs> and what our passions are. And, and there's, there's reasons for those that, that take us on our life journey. 
So I don't think we can ignore them. And I think you're right. I think that you're going to end up doing it on some level, no matter what. Can we like talk about how blame your parallel origin story is? Because like some will have like an accident and like they're like rock climbing and you just like didn't do anything. They like, went to bed and then woke, woke <laughs> up one day. Like, do you ever like to change your story just to give it some pizzazz, like some... Like... Yeah, it's so funny. There, there, you know, there's sometimes where I, when I was a kid, someone would stop me on the street and be like, what happened to you? And I'm like, car accident. Like I, because like ha- I'm literally passing by. I'm like, I don't have the, the time to tell you <laughs> the story of like literally what happened. But yeah, it was, you know, at the time I thought it was almost a little more confusing of what happened because I mm-hmm. was completely healthy. I had like I'd never broken a bone before. I'd never been in the hospital. <laughs> and then one day I literally had a stomach ache that got worse and worse over the course of a night. And then I ended up in the hospital in the emergency room and they thought I had appendicitis at first. So it wasn't even like, even when I got there, you know, it was like, okay, well, you know, this is serious, but we know how to treat it. And, but then by the end of that first night, they're like, well, that's not what you have. We did x-rays, blood tests. We can't find anything wrong with you. Like they, they literally had no idea and I still couldn't move my legs. And I didn't even know I couldn't move my legs until I was getting x-rays taken. Cause I walked into the hospital and everything. I only had that pain in, in my stomach. So it wasn't until I was getting x-rays taken that I realized my legs were heavy. And so, but by the end of that night, I couldn't move them at all. And then they were telling me, well, we have no idea. Like <laughs> you seem healthy. <laughs> like I'm like, I know. And I feel healthy. Like this is really odd. And then, yeah. And then they did an MRI uh, the next day and then found a little blood vessel in my spinal cord had ruptured. It wasn't like any other spinal cord injury at that point. It had damaged the nerves. And they were like, yeah, you're, you're paraplegic now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, first of all, I've never heard of this happening. Second of all, I I didn't even know anyone that had an accident or anything that made them have a spinal cord injury. So the whole world of even paralysis was like, you know, out of my league. I I just didn't even know anybody. I didn't have that experience to, to have any reference. And then, like I said, I also had no reference to the disability community. So it was like, wait, what? Like, it was a whole world turn. And then... Also, even though I had spine surgery to go in and remove the blood vessels that had ruptured, after that, I, you know, I had, was recovering from spine surgery, just like the other, the other kids in my, in my unit who had had car accidents or diving accidents. Like we were all kind of in the same boat. It didn't matter whether I had, you know, what I had or they had what they had. It was like, all right, we're all paralyzed now. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I kind of forgot about that aspect until I got out of the hospital. And then I was really afraid to go back to sports. And now granted, sports was like my thing. Like I loved to be an athlete and I had to move my body. And I, that was like a part of my soul. (laughs) And and then all of a sudden I was afraid of my body because I was like, well, what else could be wrong that I don't know about? You know, like if this happened and, and this was, you know, traumatic, like, what else could happen if I get back into sports and do this and do that? And Mm -hmm. so there was a long time where it took me a while to get used to my body again and, and make it less scary. And sometimes still, I think there's a little bit of an aspect of like, well, like you just never know, you know, (laughs) like what could really happen. And I think that's actually helpful to me because I do take things very, very presently. I, I take one, one day at a time, one moment at a time. Like I, I don't try to like think about what could happen because, you know, I think when you develop a disability, like overnight for whatever case, or however it may happen, like that, that moment will always stay with you of like, wow, you never know, like life can change in an instant. And how are you going to deal with it? And I think the, the way you know that you can deal with it is that you are still you knowing that you can overcome whatever you want to overcome. You just put the work into it, but knowing that you'll be you no matter what, like you can handle anything that will happen. And, and I think that too, with, with even, with even disabilities that like, you know, end up getting progressive over time, it's the same thing in the sense that, you know, your body's going to change, you know, that things are going to change, you know, that like your life's going to change and it's going to adapt. But at the same time, you got to know you can handle that. 
and you will, you know, just like, you know, even when you get a first diagnosis, like there's, there's just like a inherent confidence, I would say, of like knowing like, okay, well, I got over that. I got over that. Like I can get over this and I can handle whatever else is coming. So I yeah. think it, in some ways it made life easier. I think in some ways getting paralyzed overnight made life in general easier because I had less anxiety of like, oh gosh, what would I do if this happened? You know, I just know that, okay, well, it'll ha if it happens, it happens. And you know, you can't plan ahead for something like that. And you can't plan of what you can't plan ahead of what you think is going to what you're going to do because you have no freaking idea. Not until you're in the moment, you know, just like you can't judge how anyone else reacts to things because you're not them and not in that moment. We can judge people. I'll, 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 I guess people can <laughs> judge. Like, but we have to like, that's just human. Like, come on, we've been judging people for the we got we got a show where people judge each other. Like, come on, we gotta we gotta judge a little bit. Like, we gotta yeah. Judge, yeah, but I mean, not right? care. If that makes sense, right? You can judge, uh, but don't like care so much. <laughs> not yeah, to where it affects your own happiness. I mean, there are some people that literally judge others to to the point where it affects their own their own progression. Because they're not thinking about themselves, they're just looking outside. But maybe that's maybe that's a way of of self education. I think because they always say whatever you're judging is really what you're judging about yourself, right? <laughs> what bothers uh, you about yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, I judge I people, but I also, I mean, I'm also just aware of myself. But like, what am I capable of doing and stuff? But I still judge people. Like, I judge people if they're lazy or something. Like, I think normal. Yeah, 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 characteristic. yeah. Like, yeah. can't, like, just yeah. stop, stop that. Like, that, like, sure, we might be wrong <laughs> yeah. sometimes, but I think some of the, most of the time we're right, too. Like, that's just human nature. Yeah. Like, that's, go, but, yeah. but let, but let's talk about judging a little bit, kind of ish. So, yeah. Yeah. you are also a founding member of Infinite Flow. It is America's first professional wheelchair ballroom dance company, which now leads a global social movement for inclusive dance. I've seen you dance before, so how many times have you hit your head trying to nail a move? <laughs> I get that question a lot. <laughs> I, I've hit my head surprisingly fewer times than people would think. Well, we used to have these days in the dance studio called experimental days, mm -hmm. where it's just like, okay, what can we accomplish here? And I had a dance partner, um, Forrest, he's a great ballroom dance partner, and he, um, is a standing dance partner and he dances, had never danced with someone in a wheelchair ballroom before he met me. So a lot of what we accomplished was, he would say, this is what I, this is a move I can do with somebody that's standing. How can we like see how to translate it into like what we could do? And yeah, there were definitely days where I came this close to like hitting my head or falling or whatever. <laughs> but then if we hadn't no chanced it, then we wouldn't have gotten to the cool moves that we, we are able to do now. So there was always a, a risk or a chance, but sometimes I'm just like, okay, well, for me, it's, that's how you create, you know, you got to get outside of your box and, and I wouldn't, I'm not going to say I would promote other people. <laughs> <laughs> to do what I do because it could be dangerous and is not necessarily for everybody. But that's how I am able to 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 get my creative juices flowing is to literally push my boundaries as far as physicality goes and and just see see what happens. So are you the yeah, pusher I, or the yeah. guy the pusher of like going past your comfort zone? I think it's probably oh definitely I I don't I don't think he pushes me past my comfort zone unless it's he knows I can do better at dance in general. But when it comes mm -hmm. to like the experiments of like the tricks that we do, it's kind of mutual. Like we're both like, all right, yeah, like let's try it. You know, I have another dance partner named Marty and the same thing, like there's times where we're like, let's just try it. It might be a disaster, but let's try it. And sometimes, you know, like I'll roll over him or his foot or something and he'll <laughs> like by accident kick me in the head or whatever. But um <laughs> But yeah, that's how you make great art. Sometimes you gotta slip and fall a little bit. But yeah, I definitely yeah, get judged I, for for being a little bit a little dangerous. But you know, that's that's my personality. It's my personality to. I mean, to, you're in a wheelchair. Like, how worried can I get for you, honestly? 
well, that's what I kind of always used to say. I'd be like, I'm already paralyzed. Like, you know, and then people, then uh, whenever I used to say that, someone would be like, well, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is, like, going back to what I said before, okay, well, I know other people that have had that, and I know other people that have gotten through that. I'm pretty sure I could do it, you know? It would be unfortunate in the sense that it's not something that I would choose, but if something happens, I know that I'll be able to keep going forward. So, and it's just, you know, it's always about learning. It's always about learning, whether it's, you know, a lesson to be learned that, you know, teaches you not to do that anymore. <laughs> like recently, I have to say getting older and my, and my bones aren't as strong. Well, in my arms, they are, but not in my legs because of the paralysis. So mm -hmm. recently I've broken my hip and my leg in the last few oh, years. No. Yeah. And How do you manage to do that? Well, that's the thing. You would think that those th would, things would have happened when I was doing crazy stunts um, during dance. But no. What happened just I was out walking my dog and my little wheel um, was like caught in a little divot and my chair went over sideways. And I, I didn't even think anything of it because it wasn't a big fall at all, especially compared to mm -hmm. the other falls I've had. And then, you know, a day later, I'm, I, I was feeling faint every time I would sit up and was having all these weird symptoms and went to the hospital and they're like, yeah, you broke your hip. And I didn't feel the pain crazy. Of, of the breaking of the hip. Yeah. And then with the knee, I was just trying to get into one of those like photo booths <laughs> with like one of the old school photo booths with a friend of mine who's also happened to be paralyzed. And I just thought it would be this great idea if we both were able to get into this photo booth together. <laughs> and sure enough, like coming back out when I like fell, like I ended up breaking my right under my knee. And then, of course, my husband's like, are you, have you learned your lesson yet? Like, you're not, you, you're, <laughs> you're not uh, unbreakable. And, uh, but the experience was great. So, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like, I'm definitely becoming more careful with what I do. A little more, a little more, how should I, how should I say it? Discretionary when it comes to weighing the, the options. I feel like that's not going to stop you, though. I think you'll still be your old self I, I think, all the way to the yeah, end. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think you're right. I think, I think there's some things about people that just, you are you, you know, and that that goes away, your spirit will go away. So I'd, I'd rather continue to be me than to be afraid of everything and, and worry about not worry about, you know, what could happen rather than like what I want to happen. If that makes sense. Yeah, you're like the queen of the lamest story to get any accident possible ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, like, you're getting all these accidents, but, like, they're such mundane little tasks that doesn't happen to regular people, but it's happened to you, like, you know, like... Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah, it's it's an interesting, interesting world. We all, uh... That's what, one of the things I love about talking to people and listening to people's stories, because everybody has a story. Every every single human being on the planet has a story, and I'm sure you like appreciate it too, considering that you uh, interview people. It's it's just it's fascinating. It's fascinating because you could have somebody that lives like the most you would think, or has never had anything you know happen to them in their entire life, but they are the most interesting person like you will ever meet. You know, just based <laughs> on the way their brain works. You know, like. And then there's the opposite. Like someone could have a million things happen to their life and then you talk to them for two seconds and they haven't absorbed any of it and have not, you know, transferred any of it into something that, that's interesting. So it, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. I mean, I would definitely see some details about you just to make you sound more like badass, I guess. Just, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like just give some pizzazz. Like, like I also don't want like freak people out like, oh, if you're just, walking your dog and like your world you're going to break a hip and you know that's not something i want to like instill on people either like right you know, like, that's true too yeah <laughs> it's like you going... know, it's, that's actually yeah you know i yeah. i definitely um funny you say that because i even when i'm with a dance company one of the things we do is we perform at school assembly and sometimes when i tell my story because they ask me like well how did you get paralyzed <laughs> and a lot of the time I'm very hesitant to tell the story because I don't want the kids to be like, oh, wait, like, 
So if I have a stomach ache, it means I'm going to get paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, I know. And I'm trying to say, like, it's so rare. Like, do not worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, if you fall over in your wheelchair, you're most likely not going to break your hip. If you get into a photo booth, you're most likely not going to break your leg and have surgery. Yeah. So it, it it's kind of funny. But yeah. But then I'll have, you know. I'll have things that I think are going to be the most exciting story to tell and it ends up being super boring. So yeah, life's funny <laughs> that way. <laughs> yeah. So let's go back to your dancing. So like, I'm assuming you have a mix of other dancers in wheelchairs or disabled and you have able-bodied dancers. So is it difficult for you to find other dancers in like both realms? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. In both realms, I would say. I would say that for one, a lot of people with disabilities don't know they can dance. They just assume mm -hmm. like, okay, that's a limitation that, you know, I have and which isn't true at all. You could literally dance with your eyes. Like it's it dance is something that it's an expression of, of emotion and whether you can hear, whether you can't hear, whether you can see, whether you can't see. I mean, literally does not matter. Dance can be for every single person on the planet. That's one. So I, I think getting people with disabilities to realize like they can dance no matter what is a challenge because not everybody tells them that in their everyday life. So they're very hesitant to even try. And on the other aspect of it, there's a lot of professional dancers who have danced their whole life, have never, like I said, have never danced with someone in a wheelchair before with any other disability before. And they're very nervous about it because all of a sudden they're at square one and for a professional dancer to have been dancing your entire life and your whole career is built on perfection and, you know, getting to a certain level. And then all of a sudden starting at the beginning and realizing they have to be humble enough to say, oh, gosh, I don't know how to start here <laughs> and I need to learn a whole nother skill. That's hard for a lot of people to, to go to. So they have to be open. They have to be open to learning new things. And then also experimenting, you know, and a lot of people are, are afraid. I've definitely, you know, been out even in, at like a dance club or something. And someone is like, I really want to dance with you, but I'm really afraid I'm going to hurt you. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> fine. Like, I'm probably going to hurt you. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think that there's just this stigma about, you know, people with disabilities being so fragile. And, you know, and so the last thing they want to do is dance with somebody that has a disability. So I think it's getting over the these stigmas on both sides of the mentality of, about dance to get to get people to come in and and try it and once they do then they're like oh this is awesome so i mean just to be fair you did hurt yourself going to the photo booth so you are a little fragile you're kind of reinforcing the stigma. now i am i know <laughs> <laughs> but but like i said i've never been injured dancing so <laughs> so i i can at least say that much <laughs> i'd be like I'm becoming a little fragile for sure in some ways, but yeah, no, for some reason when I, maybe because when I dance, I'm usually like loosened up, you know what I mean? And, and I've actually stretched and I'm more conscious about my body movement. Whereas when I was getting in the photo booth, I'm sure it was just, you know, instinct reaction of just falling. Like it wasn't, it wasn't that I was conscious <laughs> about my, my, my physical movement. So I think that plays a part in it as well. Like being on the ready, you know, being prepared. Yeah, I mean, I feel you. It'd probably be just most likely to freak accidents and whatnot. Like, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I think it's a free accident. Um, yeah, so yeah. just one last question. So it's been 10 years since the uh, show had been aired with your mom. So how is your relationship with your mom now? Like, has it been better or because you were talking about how like it's not worth it anymore to be in her life anymore so do you still have a relationship or you have you did separate it for good yeah no she's still in my life and i've let go of a lot of like we're talking about judgment i've let go of a lot of judgment i had about it which gave me a lot yeah. of a lot more patience with her i think a, a lot of what was so hard for me and why i felt like i needed to distance myself was because it just felt so stressful all the time and it wasn't good for my health and now that i've let go of a lot of like what i need from her instead of what it is now i've accepted what it is i feel so much more at peace and i'm actually able to have a relationship 
with her on some level mm-hmm. where it's not um it's not hard and it's not I mean I shouldn't say it's not hard. It's definitely hard. I mean with any mother daughter relationship it's hard. But on the extra stress level that I used to feel less like this this wish for it to be different all the time and if it wasn't that it just it felt so yeah the only way i can describe it is just like an underlying anger about it i've kind of let go of that now and because of that now i'm able to just you know talk on a more patient level and i also kept some boundaries up like i know it's not really necessarily good for us to spend too much time together <laughs> so if it's a visit it's a short visit you know and um so i've learned a lot and i feel a lot more mature as an adult being able to handle it now so i would say it's much better but i don't think it's necessarily because the circumstances changed it's just because of the my perspective about it okay so before i take the mic away from you is there anything you want to say promote any words of wisdom no winning lottery numbers the mic is all yours <laughs> Um, let's see. I predict the Atlanta Braves to win the World Series this year. And, um, (laughs) but you're a California girl though, right? I am, but I grew up in Atlanta, so I'm still a Braves fan. Mm. Um, although my husband's a Philly fan, so I've adopted the Philadelphia Eagles and the Sixers. And now that the Sixers Mm. just lost in the playoffs. (laughs) <laughs> um, I got to take that one out, but the way you're doing it though, so prediction. you got that going for you. you got your good backup. The what, you got the the New York Lakers, the the LA Lakers are in oh, the yeah, playoffs. The, so you yeah, got, the LA Lakers. Yeah, so you got yeah, you, you have a good backup. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always had good backup here in LA, and that's for <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, no loss for good sports teams. So <laughs> that's always a plus. Those are my um, sports predictions. Let's see, and my words of wisdom. Well, my favorite quote that I came up with is fear will disable you, courage will enable you. And I think that because throughout my life, like I've realized, the old, the, like this isn't a disability. Like the disability is the things that hold us back when they shouldn't. And that can be, you know, that's a humanity thing across the board. It has nothing to do with that. But the, the true ability that will give us all ability to do whatever we want is is courage enough to to know that we can so that's that's my words of wisdom <laughs> and then see now i'm getting shy <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> just because i'm like having to be personal um <laughs> and then uh let's see what else and yeah and just it, it was really great to meet you and i um appreciate you giving me this platform and hope we can continue like more conversation it's been very enlightening and uh yeah i'd like to hear more about your perspective on a lot of these things too so maybe we should flip yeah. it around next time and i'll interview you sure um thank you i think i did mia or my, it's maya right mia okay so thank you mia for giving me your time and expertise thank you everyone for listening and watching if you want to follow mia the link will be in the description below thank you everyone and i'll see everyone next time Bye-bye. bye bye